Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, at the outset, I would be I am very thankful to the organizing committee of Ethicon 2023 with special mention of Acharya Sir, Smitha Ma'am, Chitambram Sir, and Dr. Preet Sood for giving me this opportunity to uh, share my views on this particular topic that is rules of clinical trials past and present uh, out here i'll be talking about uh, specifically i will be talking about the new drug clinical trial rules that were passed in 2019 and i'll be only talking about the salient features of this particular rule uh, so let's proceed ahead with the salient features of this particular uh, document that was there now this particular document that is the new drug and clinical trial was issued by the government of india by gazette notification dated 19th march 2019 and it was set as new drug and clinical trial rule 2019 and this rule is applicable for all new drugs investigational new drugs for human use clinical trials beba studies and ethics committee now, some of the salient features of this particular uh, new drug clinical trial rule were one of the high, salient highlights was the definition of an academic clinical trial. So clinical trial of a drug that is already approved for a certain claim and is initiated by an investigator, academic or research institution for a new indication or a new route of administration or new dose or new dosage form where the results of such trials are intended to be used only for academic or research purposes and not for seeking approval of the central licensing authority or regulatory authorities of any country for marketing or commercial purposes. So there are a few things that they have highlighted out here. The first thing is that any new drug that is uh, initiated by an investigator, academic or research institute and uh, he has uh, supposedly this particular person does not want to seek approval uh, from the central licensing authority or maybe he does not want to at any point of time he does not want to go for any claims for this particular uh, uh, clinical trial that particular clinical trial has been initiated as an academic clinical trial now there's also a definition of biomedical and health research where research which includes studies on basic applied and operational research or clinical research which is designed primarily to increase scientific knowledge about disease and condition be it physical or social behavioral their detection and cause and evolving strategies for health promotion, prevention or amelioration of the disease and rehabilitation, but does not include clinical trials as defined. So they have, now what they have done is they have even highlighted what is a basic biomedical and health research. Now, in this particular slide, we would be talking about certain rules that have been modified, that have been changed uh, by the uh, gadget notification and what these do these rules apply for so the rule number 10 that is the first which leads to, which deals with renewal of registration of ethics committee for clinical trial now this rule says that for any uh, ethics committee the renewal of registration should be made 90 days prior to the date of expiry of the registration so they have fixed a timeline of 90 days and what will this particular thing do it will allow ethics committee committee to continue to be functional for a longer period if the renewal application is submitted in time. Rule 12, Clause 4 uh, talks about proceedings of ethics committee for clinical trials and they say that any change in the membership or the constitution should be intimated to DCGI within 30 days. So they are permitting changes and this would help in maintaining compliance. Rule number 13, deals with maintenance of records of bioethics committee for clinical trials and they have cleared that five years after completion of clinical trials there should be there and it has also been uh, said that ethics committee may have to undergo training and revise their sops accordingly then 
rule number 14 deals with suspension or cancellation of registration of ethics committee so the change is they have given a show cause notice warning letter rejection of results suspension or debarment and this is basically done if the ethics committee fails to comply with the rules or with the sops that have been submitted and rule number 15 which deals with ethic ethics committee for biomedical and health research this is basically uh, that it will follow the national ethical guidelines for biomedical and health research which involves human participant as not uh, issued by ICMR has to be followed. So there is a specific uh, rule that has been introduced which is pertaining to the biomedical research. Now what it will do is it will revamp, revamp the existing ethics committee and there it might require the, or the uh, institutes might have to require a separate ethics committee, one for the clinical trial and other for the academic research. Moving beyond this, uh, the chapter 12 that is has been append uh, that is the amendment of drug and cosmetic act 1945 now in this uh, the drug and cosmetic act, act 1945 the following new rules have been inserted into rule 122da and this is rule number 122daa so this is non application of certain rules for new drugs and investigational new drugs for human use so the part 10a and schedule y shall not be applicable in respect of new drugs and investigational new drugs for human use form at the date of coming into the force of the new drug and clinical trial rule 2019 and the references in respect to human use made in these rules shall respectively be omitted and the construction thereof shall be construed accordingly and shall stand amended with all conjunct meaning of the grammar. So this is uh, trying to highlight uh, certain rules that have been excluded out from the uh, Drug and Cosmetic Act of 1945. So what are the key highlights? In the When we talk about the key highlights of this, the, the new drug and clinical trial rule, which was introduced in 2019. Now, this is applicable from the date of release, that is 25th March, where except Chapter 4, that is Ethics Committee for Biomedical and Health Research, which will come into force after 180 days. Rule 97, that is Rule 122 DAA, this rule supersedes existing Part 10A and Schedule Y of the Drug and Cosmetic Act 1945. All existing licenses, orders, directions will continue to remain valid. There have been a defined timelines for review and approval of clinical trial applications. Now, this guideline says that it is 90 days for approval of a global clinical trial and 30 days for an investigational new drug being developed in India. If uh, you do not obtain any response from DCGI. That means that the uh, it is an automatic approval. You need to proceed by giving a notification to the DCGI via filling up the form CT4A. Now, the application for phase one and to phase four clinical trials has increased and we'll be talking about this application, the amount of application fee that is being charged, which has increased six to eight folds. Few more points that have been there is now it has also talked about the validity of clinical trial, which is approval for now this is for two years to initiate the uh, study and it is extendable by one year. So what it has done is it has uh, highlighted that what are the types of uh, uh, what is the approval and what is the time of the approval. Then uh, it has defined two types of ethics committee. One is for clinical trial and BAB studies and the other one is for biomedical and health research. And we have I've already told you that the biomedical and health research uh, basically is governed by the ICMR guidelines that have been issued. Then the validity of the ethical committee registration has been increased to five years. Earlier it was three years and DCI, DCGI is to be informed about approval granted by ethics committee within 15 working days of grants of such approval in case of rejection of clinical trial application. This is another thing that has been added up. The applicant may request to reconsider the application within a period of 60 days from the date of rejection of the application. Now, there has to be quarterly report of enrollment status to be, which has to be submitted to the DCGI. This is another modification. There is a six monthly status. Earlier, it was an annual status for each clinical trial and termination of study has to be notified within 30 days. So now what is what uh, the DCGI has done is it has given clear guidelines, clear uh, number of days that are required for each set of 
further categorizations. The other pro uh, some other uh, key highlights are it has also given a provision of pre and post submission meeting which can be done with DCGI provision of waiver of local clinical trial if the drug is approved and marketed in certain countries no change in process and requirement of payment of compensation and the onus of providing med medical management to the participation always lies on the investigator condition for post trial assess of study drug to trial participants has been outlined we will be talking about this further in great details the accreditation of ethics committee as was uh, one of the salient features earlier is not mandatory anymore the serious adverse events reporting timeline has been changed for sponsors now it is 14 calendar days for awareness of serious adverse events or death and not occurrence or onset of serious adverse event the periodic safety update report content and the structure is aligned with the European Union PBRER, which is as per the ICH form format, which is very detailed and exhaustive, but the timeline has been retained as per the old regulation that says it is 30 calendar days from the data lock point. Free medical care uh, comes under the prerogative of principal investigator who can decide to continue medical care or until it is decided as not related. So we'll be talking about this free medical care or post-trial assess of study drugs in the coming slides regarding the rules that are pertaining to this particular aspect of the guidelines that had been issued. Now coming to the chapter one, which is the preliminary chapter, which the rule two of this has certain definitions, which include new and revised guidelines. We have already been talking about this gives and brings in more clarity. Uh, the academic clinical trials is the new point that has been incorporated into it. The BAB studies has been integrated into the rules. Efficacy and effectiveness is a newer point that has been added up. New drug minor modifications have been done drug done on this particular aspect. Orphan drugs, which uh, defini defined as a, a particular thing, a particular disease that does not that affects not more than five lakh populations. The phytopharmaceutical drug is another new aspect. Post trial assess uh, similar biologics have been new things that have been added, and there has been modification of the definition of sponsor. The, the clinical research organization has also been defined and the clinical trial applicant is considered as a sponsor. So what it does, it, it brings into in more clarity regarding the various aspects that are required uh, for new clinical, uh, new drug clinical trial rules. Now coming to the uh, clinical trial, clinical trial in relation to new drug or investigational new drug means any systematic study of such new drug or investigational new drug in human subjects to generate data which could be for discovering or verifying the clinical, pharmacological and adverse effect profile of the drug. The pharmacological profiles includes the pharmacodynamic and the pharmacokinetic parameters uh, and the basic objective is to determine the safety, efficacy or tolerance of such new drugs or an investigational new drug. Orphan drug uh, has been defined further and it is a drug that is intended to treat a condition which does not affect more than 5 lakh persons in India. So now we are talking about specific guidelines in, in context to India. And then another aspect was the post-trial assess, which means making a new drug or investigational new drug available to the trial subjects after completion of clinical trial, through which the said drug, if it has been found beneficial to a trial subject during clinical trial for a period as considered necessary by the investigator and the ethics committee. So the post-trial assess site, if supposedly the benefit has been obtained from the drug, the onus of providing the drug by the sponsor has to be decided by the investigator and the ethics committee. Moving beyond further, moving beyond this, we talk about the new drug and what is a new drug, a drug or it could be its active pharmaceutical ingredient or the phytopharmaceutical drug, which has not been used in the country to any significant 
extent except in accordance with the provision of act and the rules made there under as per conditions specified in the labeling thereof and has not been approved as safe and efficacious by the central licensing authority with respect to the claims. And another definition is a drug approved by the central licensing authority for certain claims and proposed to be marketed with modified or new claims including indications, route of administrations, dosage and dosage forms. Similarly, a fixed dose combination of two or more drugs which have been approved separately for certain claims and have been proposed to be combined for the first time in a fixed ratio or where the ratio of ingredient in an approved combination is proposed to be changed with certain claims including indication, route of administration, dosage and dosage form. So it is providing uh, exact clarity about the status of a drug that has not been approved as such by the central licensing authority, a drug that has been approved and a fixed dose combination of two or more drugs. Now moving beyond this, a uh, new drug is a modified or sustained release form of a drug or novel drug delivery system of any drug approved by the central licensing authority or it could be a vaccine recommended deoxyribonucleic acid derived products, living modified organisms, monoclonal antibodies, stem cell derived products, gene therapeutic products or xenogra xenografts which are intended to be used as a drug. So in, uh, it is taking care of almost all the aspects of this and the drugs other than the drugs revered in the subclause 4 and 5 shall continue to be a new drug for a period of 4 years from the date of the permission granted by the central licensing authority and the drug referred to in subclauses 4 and 5 shall always be deemed as a new drug. Now for the clinical trial, prior permission by central licensing authority is required and approval from ethics committee is required. The oversight of the clinical trial for day-to-day -day functioning and any other aspect has to be taken care by the ethics committee. Now talking about the uh, clinical trial or BAB studies of the new drug or and investigational new drugs, there are certain rules and what do they pertain to the rule 21. It talks about application for permission to conduct clinical trial of the new drug or investigational new drug. Now, uh, we already told you that a, a gap of 90 days and 30 days is required. The so form CT04, which is in, uh, which has been used in place of form 44 with revised application fees as per six schedule. Now the six schedule contains the application fees, which I'll be talking about. Uh, the central or the state government sponsored projects are exempted from any application fees. And according to the, the any order, issued by CDSCO on 10th April 2019. Form CT0 form and other forms can be manually completed and uploaded in Sugam till all the new forms are integrated into the online submission portal so that there is no delay in the submission. Rule number 22, clause 2, grant, which deals with grant or permission to conduct clinical trial. We have already, already been talking about for a global clinical trial. Uh, if uh, you do not re receive any communication from DCGI within 90 days then after filling up the form this particular trial this particular uh, trial can proceed ahead so timeline for the review of application has now, now been the rule rule number 22 clause 3 sub clause 2 which talks about grant of permission to conduct clinical trial in case if the trial is rejected the applicants can request DCGI to reconsider the application within a period of 60 working days from the date of rejection of the application or on payment of fees. So we'll be talking about these fee structure in a later part of the slide. So now, uh, this what, are the, what, is, what is the impact of this? There is a process to appeal and reconsideration of rejected application is in place. <coughs> Talking about Rule 23, which deal with permission to conduct clinical trials of a new drug or an investigational new drug as a part of discovery, research and manufacture in India. 
first we were talking about the global clinical trials and now we are talking about the scenario of India, where there is an automatic approval for a global clinical trial. It was 90 days and for a uh, local product, it is which has been developed indigenously, the application to conduct clinical trial will be considered approval if there are no queries raised by DCGI within 30 days of the application. So what the sponsor needs to do, he needs to just notify uh, the DCGI with form CT04 and this has to be done prior to initiation of the clinical trial. So this will encourage more trials to proceed ahead. <laughs> Now, rule number 25, subclause 2, talks about condition of permission for uh, condition for, of permission for conduct of clinical trial. So there's another step that has been ad added up. Supposedly, the clinical trial sites does not have their own ethics committee. Uh, the, what they can do is they can use a registered ethics committee of another trial site or they can also use a registered independent ethics committee provided that it is located within the same city or within a radius of 50 kilometers of the clinical trial site. So what it will do is it open access to several new clinical trials sites for conducting trial. Rule number 25 clause 7 talks about status of enrollment of trial subjects shall be submitted to the DCGI on quarterly basis. So this is basically to increase the notification and improve the compliance. Uh, then rule number 25 clause, sub clause eight talks about six monthly status report in each clinical trial to be submitted in place of annual reports. This again tends to increase the compliance. Rule number 25 sub clause nine talks about termination of the cl clinical trial which has to be notified to the DCGI within 30 days. And this is another step that has been taken care to increase the compliance. Rule number 26 talks about validity period of permission to initiate a clinical trial. Now, uh, we have been talking about the permission to initiate a clinical trial that is there under Rule 22 in Form CT05 or automatic approval that is there under Rule 23. We have already talked about it. And this will be valid for a period of two years from the date of issuance unless it is extended by DCG. And we talked about it being extended by a one more year or so. So clinical trial has to be initiated within two years of the issuance of the clinical trial permission. Rule number 27 deals with post-trial assess of investigational new drugs or new drugs. Now, the post-trial assess of a new drugs to a patient, uh, this is completely at the discretion of the investigator and approval of ethics committee. Drug has to be provided free of cost by the sponsor if supposedly the drug has been found to be beneficial. Uh, uh, now, what it happens is there is no liability for post-trial use of investigational new drug or drug on the sponsor if the legal hire of the patient has consented the use of new drug in writing. So, of the after the uh, trial site, uh, the trial duration is over. The liability of the sponsor finishes off if the uh, the uh, legal hire of the patient has consented for it. Rule number twenty-eight talks about. Uh, academic clinical trial and I've already defined this academic clinical trial and this says that there is no permission required for conducting an academic clinical trial by DCGI if it is intended solely for academic research purpose. Only ethics committee approval is mandatory. Observation of such clinical trials should not be used for promotional purposes. We have already been talking about it. And ICMR guidelines has to be followed in this particular situation. So it will try, it will be helpful in conducting academic research by various institutes and colleges. Uh, now talking about the compensation, uh, rule number 40 talks about medical management in clinical trial or BAB studies of new drug or investigational new drug, which talks about the sponsor to provide free medical management to the subject as long as required as per the opinion of investigator or till such time it is established that the injury is not related to clinical trial, whichever is earlier. So now the, uh, the medical management of the a trial pay subjects lies is on the onus of the sponsor as long as investigator investigator desires it to be or maybe the other part that we have already talked about so clarity on this decision on the requirement of medical management is to be provided by the sponsor and onus of the investigator 
to decide whether sponsor will pay for medical management or not. Then rule number 42 deals with procedure for compensation in case of injury or death during clinical trial or BABE studies. So two and three cases of serious adverse events of death, permanent disability or any other injury other than death shall be examined in the following manner, namely the sponsor or its representative and the investigator shall forward their report on serious adverse event of death after due analysis to the DCGI, HOI, EC within 14 days of the knowledge of occurrence of a serious adverse event of death. So this has been changed from days of occurrence to knowledge of occurrence of serious adverse event, which supposedly is a more practical approach. Rule number 73 uh, this clause 2 deals with manner of labeling. Labeling requirement has been specified and there's no change in the basic requirement. What does this new labeling requirement mean? Where a drug is being imported by a license on behalf of another person, the license shall indicate and uh, on the label of the container, name and address of the importer and the manner of labeling, relabeling or any alteration of the uh, of the brochure would be required, would require further approval by the DCGI. Then rule number 73, uh, seven sub clause seven and eight talks about application for permission to import new drug for sale or distribution uh, for sale or distribution in India. So the local clinical trial may not be required to be submitted along with application if the new drug is, is approved and marketed in countries and there's no major uh, serious unexpected uh, su uh, suspected unexpected serious adverse drug reaction. It has already been granted permission to conduct a global clinical trial which is ongoing in India and in the meantime such new drug has been approved for marketing in a country. There is no probability or evidence of difference in Indian population undertaking in writing to conduct phase 4 clinical trial. Submission of requirement relating to animal toxicology, reproduction studies, teratogenic studies, perinatal studies, mutagenicities and carcinogenicities may be modified or relaxed in case of new drug approved and marketed for more than two years in other countries. So this is uh, pointing to a more flexible approach. Some more miscellaneous rules are rule number 98 and 99 talk about pre-submission meeting and post-submission meeting respectively. So the application with the fees has to be submitted uh, with to the DCG or any other authorized permission and shall provide suitable clarification to the applicant. Uh, now, the problem is this suitable clarification has not been specified whether it is verbal or written. Rule number 101 talks about name of the countries for purpose of new drug approval. DCGI will specify name of countries for considering waiver of local clinical trials for approval of new drug. Uh, rule number 103 talks about debar debarment of applicants. So debarment, for, uh, debarment would be for submitting misleading or fake or fabricated document again to ensure compliance rule number 104 talks about order of suspension or revocation in public domain so any order of suspension or revocation or cancellation of permission or license or registration it would be published in the website of cdsco so this is just to increase the compliance now talking about the schedules, the first schedule that is rule 19 and 31 talk about general principle and practice of clinical trial. Second schedule includes rules 21, 75, 80 and 97, which talk about requirement and guidelines for permission to import or manufacture of new drugs for sale or to undertake clinical trial. Rule one, sub clause two talks about special situation for a new drug where relaxation, abbreviation, omission or deferment of data may be considered or for accelerated approval process or where we not need an expedited review process. Table four talks about data to be submitted along with applicants to conduct clinical trial or import or manufacture of phytopharmaceutical drugs in the country. So this is a new specific requirement that has been included. Now, rules 8, 10, 11, 25, and a few more of these particular 42 and 49 uh, talks about conduct of clinical trial. So there is no change in the requirement of conducting clinical trial, uh, informed consent responsibilities of various stakeholders. Uh, we have already talked about this post-trial assess of the investigational product that has to be free of cost to the trial subject. This is 
uh, as per the recommendation of PI and EC, there is no change in the informed consent. It is as per table three, no change. There's a uh, change in investigator undertaking, which is as per template and uh, and table five, there's no change in the element of serious adverse event reposting. The fifth schedule talks about post-marketing assessment. Now there has been a distinction that has been made between phase four trial and post-marketing surveillance studies, but it is not clear whether non-interventional or observational studies would also require approval from DCGI. Now this is particularly still a gray area. The periodic safety update report submission is mandatory. There is a defined structure for periodic safety update report contact and its structure, which is now aligned, aligned with the European Union ICH format, which is detailed and exhaustive. We have already, already been talking about it, but the timeline has been retained. That is still 30 calendar days. Now, talking about the phase four post-marketing trial. Now, this particular trial, this particular def we were talking about includes additional drug-drug interaction, dose response, safety study and trial design to support use under the approval condition, example, morbidity or morbidity studies, et cetera. Such trials will be conducted conducted under an approved protocol with defined scientific objectives, inclusion and exclusion criteria, safety efficacy assessment criteria with the new drug under approved condition for use in approved patient population. In such trial, the ethical aspect for protection of rights, safety, and well-being of the trial subject shall be followed as per the regulatory provisions, including that of compensation in a case of clinical trials related to injury or death and good clinical practice guideline. And in such study, the study drug may be provided to the trial subject free of cost unless otherwise there is a specific concern or justification for not providing the drug free of cost. So these comes under the phase four post-marketing trial. Moving beyond this, what is the post-marketing surveillance study or observational or non-interventional studies for active surveillance? Such studies are conducted with new drug approved condition of its use under a protocol approved by DCGI with scientific objectives. The safety drugs are the part of treatment of patients in wisdom of prescribers, including the protocol. Regulatory provisions and guidelines applicable for clinical trial of a new drug are not applicable in such cases. Now, the sixth schedule that talks about rule number 21, 23, and so on, talks about fees of particip uh, participation or license permission registration certificate. So rule 21 talks about phases of conduct of clinical trial, which varies from two to three lakhs, as has been mentioned out here. Rule number 22, which talks about reconsideration of application, 50,000 is the fees. Rule number 67, which talks about application for import of new drug or investigational new drug for clinical trial or BAB studies or for examination test and analysis. This is 5,000 per product. Rule number 68 talks about reconsideration of application. The fees is 1,000. Pre-submission meeting, the fees is 5 lakh. Post-submission me meeting, uh, the fees is 50,000. Any, any, uh, any other application which is not specified above has a fees of 50,000. The seventh schedule, which includes rule number 39, 40, and 42. Now, it talks about formula to determine the quantum of compensation in case of clinical trial-related injury or death. So, there is no change as compared to the existing rule. Now, this has been again divided into two brackets, more than 16 years and less than 16 years. So for more than 16 years, there's no change in the existing rule. For less than 16 years, there's a need to develop formula for calculating the quantum of compensation in this particular group of subset of patients. The H schedule consists of forms where we talk about few forms which are there in Rule 21, the CT04, which talks about application for grant of permission to conduct clinical trial of new drug or investigational new drug. CT06, which is under Rule 22, 25, 26, 29, and 30, talks about permission to conduct clinical trial of a new drug or investigational new drug. CT16 talks about application for grant of license to import new drug or investigational new drug for the purpose of clinical trial. CT17 talks about license to import new drugs for investigational new drugs for the purpose of clinical trials for BAB studies or for examination test and analysis. And similarly, we have uh, CT24 and 25 that is for application of license and license to import. So this was in brief about the 
new clinical uh, new drug clinical trial rules that was implemented in 2019 uh, that's all from my side thank you so much for your patient hearing